It's a condition that can lead to people wrongly being accused of being drunk or on drugs. But now a campaign is hoping to raise awareness of Huntington's disease and end the stigma around it. The hereditary disorder leads the body's nervous system to progressively deteriorate physically, cognitively and mentally until the person becomes dependent on the help of others. In a survey by the Huntington's Disease Alliance, 70% of those impacted by the condition said it had been extremely difficult or life-ruining, leading to the organisation to call for improvements in care for those affected. We're going to talk now to Olympic medalist and double world champion rower Sarah Winkless, MBE, who tested positive for the gene that leads to the disease, and also to Ashley Clark, who cares for her dad, Desi, who has the condition. Uh, welcome both of you. Sarah, let me begin with you. Your mum had Huntington's and was diagnosed when you were in your early 20s. What was it like when she finally got that diagnosis? For me, I think it was actually helpful because I got some language around what was happening in our family. So I started to be able to gain knowledge and understand what was happening and I could learn about it and know what I was going to expect really for the future for both the mum but also for the rest of us who were in those caring positions. How did Huntingdon's affect her life? Well, mum was ill for nearly 30 years. She was absolutely incredible. She did as much as she could for as long as she could. And we kind of helped as we could as a family to make sure that happened. And our local community did it as well. But it was a real mood change in my teenage years. There was, a, there was some of the memory pieces that she wouldn't quite remember what was going on. And just being able to organise things. I remember once she sent me a card and I looked at it and thought, oh, it must be from mum because... She's only written one word in it and she'd managed to get an envelope and put the address on it, but she hadn't remembered to write the card. So the order and sequencing for things for her was incredibly, incredibly hard. And then as I went to Athens in 2004, she was in a wheelchair and she wasn't able to travel to Beijing in 2008 because of her illness. So the progression um, was slow but steady. As a child of someone with Huntington's, you have a 50-50 chance of having the disease. Why did you want to get tested as soon as you could? It goes back to that knowledge. For me, knowledge is potential power. And if I could learn about my situation, it could give me some knowledge to make good choices. And I was in my 20s. It was... Uh, I was at Cambridge, I was studying the brain, I was fascinated by it, and I was almost studying myself, if you like, as someone to see what, what would happen if I um, went through that process. I, I was incredibly well supported by Adam Brooks at the time, although obviously when I went in to get the final results, as I looked at the genetic counsellor deep inside me, I knew they didn't have good news because the face um, that she I met was one that said, I, I'm going to have to give you news that neither of us want to, to talk about today. And how did you feel when you got the result that you will develop this disease? Numb at first, I think. I was a student and I have to confess, I think my first words were, OK, should we go to the pub, let's have a drink? Um, because it was, it was life changing and not in the way I wanted to be. But I've been incredibly fortunate. I found sport, I always had sport, but I think it took new meaning to me. And um, potentially with that diagnosis, it gave me incredible freedom to do as much as I could for as long as I could. And mum was an amazing role model. She, she certainly didn't let the disease slow her down. And I really hope I won't if and when I get ill, do the same. Let's talk to Ashley now. Ashley, hello to you. I mean, you, uh, you're, you've looked after your dad, who's had Huntington's. Again, you started the testing process when you were 18, but you didn't finish it. Tell us why. Um, when I started the testing process, um, I was actually due to go away for that summer. And the way the time frame worked out and the appointments worked out, I would have been getting my results just before I left. So I didn't feel it was the right decision for me at that point. I wanted to do it at a time where I had my family and my my friends there to support me and not be leaving the country for a number of weeks and months. Sure. So do you know now or not? No, I'm currently not tested. I've no idea. <laughs> OK. And are you are you cool with that? 
Um, yeah, at this point in my life, I'm happy enough. Mm. Um, I definitely um, take every opportunity and every chance and try to make lots of memories. Um, but I will, I will get tested um, if I ever settle down and decided to start a family and all that kind of stuff. But at the minute, I'm I'm happy enough. So sure. Yeah. Now, you have been, uh, I mean, your dad was diagnosed when he was 40. You were 14. You've looked after him mm-hmm. for, since you were young. And there have been several occasions when you've been out with your dad and people have thought wrongly that he was drunk. What happened and what was that like for you both? It was really hard. Um we always tried to protect daddy and you know not let him hear or see anything like that um but it was really hard you had to keep yourself like composed in some way and make sure that he was looked after when sometimes you just you wanted to shout at the person but obviously that's not the right thing to do um i tried to use it as a chance to educate these people and say oh well actually he has huntington's disease and this is how it affects him and this is what it is um and I tried to educate them for like future um but yeah it was it was really hard sometimes it was incredibly public and there was a lot of people um which it was upsetting so it was and we heard from friends even when they would have dad out it would happen them as well people would be quite quite aggressive in a way um you know telling him he shouldn't be somewhere he shouldn't be doing something things like that there um when it was the last wee bit of like you know enjoyment that daddy had maybe Mm. getting out to events and that yes and this is part of the campaign uh, to end the stigma around huntington's what would you say to people who Mm. might see i know your mum's not no longer with us sarah but let's say you've been out with your mum let's say ashley you've been out with you're out with your dad they have Huntington's, they look different, they are acting differently, their body is moving in different ways. People might stare, people might think they're drunk. What would you say to people that they should do? What's the advice? I I loved how Ashley was talking about it, actually, because it's about educating, it's about being curious. So rather than make assumptions about what's happening with that person, I remember on one occasion mum decided to show how well she was by doing press-ups in a shop and star jumps and my brother and I were hiding behind a, a <laughs> railing because we wanted to support her doing it but we didn't want to be seen um, with her explicitly that behaviour mm. and of course people are going to stare because that isn't an ordinary thing to do in, in a shop but be curious, wonder what might be happening to the family. Maybe ask, is there anything I can do to support you? Can you, can you tell me what, what's happening rather than assume and think it's drugs or alcohol? Because it may not be the case. What would you say, Ashley? I think it would definitely be very similar. Um, I was out with Dad one time and um, he we were eating lunch and he struggled at that point with eating by himself. So I was I was feeding him and I was in my early 20s and Dad then went out to do a wee and I was keeping an eye on him from the window. And the lady came over to me and she actually asked me, she was like, what's wrong with him like do you mind me asking and that to me was the nicest and the best thing that could have happened because it gave me the opportunity to explain and explain the disease and the condition Mm. and that to me was a huge moment so it would probably be like let's not judge let's not jump to a negative and straight away think the person is drunk or on drugs and just ask the person just say like hey is there anything i can do to help or you know what what seems to be you know like what's what's going on here you know because a lot of the time i do think we we welcome the opportunity to educate rather than negative comments and hurtful very hurtful comments so yeah just Just ask and we'd be happy to explain. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Ashley Clark and Sarah Winkless, MBE. Thank you. Really good to talk to you both. Thank you. 